Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh. I like how the plate's orange as well. Everything's orange here. Don't do that. Oh, God. Hey there everyone, I thought for something a little different I'd look at something that's not video games. It's actually a staple of late night British television back in the 90s, uh, sort of anyway. If you've been seeing my Twitch recently, you might be familiar with a show that I've been watching called Get Stuffed, which is a show where students uh, try and pass fins off as grub or whatever. And I think it's only fair that I do a video all about it. But first, by way of introduction, well, what exactly is Get Stuffed? Back in the 90s, fins were a bit different. There were actually proper TV shows broadcast past the midnight hour on most of the channels. We didn't have the rolling news, casino broadcasts or home shopping crud we get these days. Instead, the wee small hours were dedicated to a wide variety of programming. Some of it was old films, of course. Another bunch of it was repeats of shows from America. But there were also a lot of original broadcasts for the insomniacs out there, or those who'd just come back from the pub. Some of it was actually good even, like In Bed With Me Dinner, a show where Bob Mills laughs at old fins from the telly and is um, nothing like what I'm doing on here at all on YouTube, <laughs> no siree. And some of it, well, it was either horrific or incredibly strange indeed, and Get Stuffed kind of falls into both of these latter categories. Get Stuffed, a five minute show that you'd usually find chucked in at random points in the nighttime schedule on ITV in the early mid 90s, was aimed specifically at one group of people who could generally be counted on to stay up all night and sleep all day. University students. The aim of the show is simple. To offer students recipes that they could cook up on their undoubtedly tiny budgets, and the recipes were usually thought up and cooked by young folk who were students themselves. As such, the results are often... uh... interesting. At best. At worst, they resemble an inhuman eldritch monstrosity passing itself off as a plate of grub. Right, our first dish is a real doozy. These two French students are going to show us how to cook mustard rabbit. Now you might think, mustard rabbit, well that doesn't necessarily sound the most offensive thing on this earth, but uh, wait and see. Status quo, be proud of that one. Wash your hands. Every episode, wash your hands. It makes up for all the dirt surrounding everything else. Gotta love the unibrow as well. Looks almost like Liam Gallagher. Mixed with, mixed with a bit of young Ronnie O'Sullivan. And... Um, see, I like mustard. I, I love mustard. I don't know about rabbit, but I love mustard. Uh, what are you doing? Are you sure? I mean, that's a lot of mustard smeared on that rabbit. In Coleman's English mustard, that'll blow your ass off and your nose. The grime everywhere. Look at that oven! My word, that hasn't been washed since George VI was kin. Hmm, yes. Nice, apparently. Uh, yeah, nice. No. No, really no. Uh, have the cream fish. No. Or fish cream or can fish. Yeah, can fish. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh god, no. Now have the Double cream fish. in yeah. the juices of the rabbit. Oh my god, no. Stop. Just please stop. No, no. Say nepa, nepa, nesepa. Mert, mert. Oh dear lord. No, don't put it on there. Sorry, sorry, I have to freeze frame. I have to freeze frame. I mean, just look, this is the final presentation. I mean, the most appetising fins there are those two sorry ass florets of broccoli, but I mean, the rabbit itself, I mean, with the, all that mustard attached to it and now it's cooked, you know what it looks like? You know, you know what that looks like to me? It looks like it's covered in phlegm. So, you know, if you really want to save money, just, um, you know, get your mate who smokes 80 
rollies a day to, you know, hock up some golden Virginia special syrup on it. And as, and as for the cream, well, if you want to save money there, simply put two fingers down your throat and hoi up onto the fucking no. plate. Probably taste better. My God, look at that. <gasps> First time I saw this, seriously. Yeah, it was all I could do to not be sick. You know Live. Nice no. Oh. Your friends will think you're great. <laughs> your friends will not think you are great, believe me. Your friends will never darken your doorstep again. <sighs> My god. You will be shocked to learn that very little information about Get Stuffed actually exists on the internet nowadays. However, shockingly enough for a 90s show screened at stupid o'clock in the morning, there was a website maintained by the program's production company, Last Ditch Television. As you can see, it's a glorious piece of 90s web design. You can smell the Microsoft front page coming off of every last hyperlink. Just look at that bloody Comic Sans and all those ghastly drawings. I managed to get some video examples of the show from this old page, which is one of the reasons why sometimes you can see every last bloody pixel on them. But it also has a few interesting tidbits related to the show's origin and creation. Apparently it was all Saddam Hussein's fault. The onset of the first Gulf War left two-bit cable companies desperate for programming, and one of them, Lifestyle Television, decided to let the show's creators, the two mystery chefs, arse about in their studio for something called The Hasty Tasty Show, which alas appears to be lost. But this gave Last Ditch Television their big TV opening. One of the show's trademarks, the constant reminder to wash your handies, stemmed from the crew being bollocked by an ITV executive due to the constant disgusting state of the kitchens in which the shows were shot in. There wasn't actually enough budget to give the studio any kind of clean. Or for much of anything at all, in fact. Well, so much for the efforts of the students. What about our mystery chefs? What can they do? Because this next episode features them cooking. Are they any better than the students? Do they make... Rabbit mixed with bloody tobacco emphysema sauce? I don't know. Let's see how they fare. I mean, blubber bar, isn't that? Isn't blubber a main ingredient of the soap that they use in Fight Club? Isn't that right? Blubber? That looks like Oliver Harper. Try a little bite of that. You like them? I'm a dentist, and even though I'm a dentist. <laughs> I'm a dentist, and you know what? I really love those blubber bars because if you eat one of those, chances are you're going to be seeing me real soon. Oh my heavens above! Yes, yes, we get it. They're superheroes. We bloody get it, you know. And we get the name of the dish too, you know. Look at that slide. That's an anti-frictional device. Oh, no, it's a f***ing spoon, mate. So it seems like what they're doing here, essentially, they're making honeycomb. Okay. So a blubber bar is basically a non-copyright infringing DIY crunchy. Okay, right. Now, I see one problem with this. There's one problem here. I mean, it's all well and good. Honeycomb, okay, that's that's a cooking process. I mean, spell and smearing mustard all over rabbit. One thing, this programme was broadcast at like two in the morning or whatever and aimed towards students. So, you it's post-pub programming, basically. So, you're trying to get these students to cook. So, what if they watch this? They've just been at the students' union all night, you know, getting hammered on woodpecker side or whatever, probably paying for all their pints by check. They come home, they watch this and they're like, yeah, let's make some blubber bars. Pissed out their skull. Honeycomb's no. dangerous. That stuff, if you if you screw up with that, that sticks to you. That burns like a motherfucker. No. Jeez. So I wonder anyone didn't bloody burn themselves trying to recreate this. I mean, I suppose that is if someone actually watched this show, which not many people did, but... You get my point, don't you? I'm really, really, really... Just... Just no, no, no. 
Come on. So basically, it's just sugar cooked and cooking chocolate. Just taste of sugar. I really can't see that being in any way nice at all. Oh, and don't forget the margarine. Don't forget the flora. Just no. No, 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 no. Or oh, alternatively, just buy a fucking crunchy. I mean, come on. Just buy a crunchy. I mean, how much were crunchies when this was made? What, 20p? 30p? At tops? This was made in, like, 1992. You know, just buy a crunchy. Why Why make it? Why, why risk literally burning your face off making honeycomb when you're a low, you know, low-class student? And just buy a crunchy. Heavens above. Probably cheaper to buy a crunchy. Just don't get it. I don't understand. Did get stuff to make any kind of impression at all on people? Well, probably not on too many. Even if the website proudly talks of how it got a nation to think a whole lot more about washing their hands, seeing as every episode made a point of telling you to do so. In fairness, a reminder to students about the importance of good hygiene probably isn't a bad thing. It did make a bit of an impression on the writers of legendary BBC satire show The Day Today, who included a parody of Get Stuffed called Sorted in one of the episodes, starring Crispin Somerville and... Oh, bloody hell. Not him. Hold on a sec. Ah, that's so much better. Anyway, the parody features Crispin and trans rights prattling about and showing you what to do if your dad unexpectedly pops his clogs, to complete with the necessary reminder to wash your hands. It's pretty funny, of course, although even with the subject matter, it's still not a whole lot more ridiculous than the actual show. The way that Get Stuffed is put together is so utterly 90s, complete with nonsensical cuts, cameras that never stand still and film from every bloody angle, constant loud noises, duck whistles and the most in-your-face presentation possible, that you can't really do much except try to match it. You can only imitate, not improve. Right folks, this last one that I'm going to show you is something very special. It is called Corny Flaky Bakey. No, not Corn Flake Bake, Corn Flaky Bakey. Now you might be immediately wondering just what the bloody hell is a Corny Flaky Bakey anyway? Well, these two ladies are about to show you. <laughs> You're in for a treat. And a tin of sweet corn. Mmm, sweet corn, onions, mushrooms, all things that traditionally go with corn flakes. Oh, and don't forget the cheese. <laughs> Why would you want to forget the cheese? I have a bad feeling about this. Wash your hands now. Get it right. Oh, and don't forget to wash your handies. I tell you, maybe they're right. There was more washing of hands on this show than any others. I mean, you never saw Dean Smith wash her blooming hands. Don't you sound so. Don't forget to mug every time you say something. Mug to the camera. Make the most of it. Heavens above my kingdom for you shutting your fucking face. Everything's chopped. Let's go to the front. Could really make a roux, but for quickness, we're gonna use a packet. Here we go. Pop it all in. I mean, I roux, packet, cheese mix. Does it really matter when you're going to put the cereal on it? Extra flavor. I'm quite sick with the mustard. Every dish seems to have mustard in it. And then we're going to add some little milk to make a paste. Mm. It's a little piece. Give it a quick stir. It's funny how this show is five minutes long, but it makes you just milk. spectacularly really by the end. I feel like you've just got around with Mike Tyson. Well, we can make certainly get sauce. enough mileage out of that horn. I think they're just about done now. Take them over here. Cook all the so much duck whistle, I'm wondering casserole. one of them doesn't slip over. Mm. Oh, oh, no. 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 Corny, flaky, bakey wig. Put the Corny, on top. flaky, bakey wig. And get it as even as possible. Oh, yeah, you got to make it even as possible for presentation purposes. 
Lois, by the way, had a cornflakes. When they come out, they look exactly the same. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh. I like how the plate's orange as well. Everything's orange here. Don't do that. Oh, God. Oh, oh man. This bloody show. Quite the nostalgia trip and not in a good way. Does Get Stuffed have any kind of legacy? Well, I could do the easy thing and say that this show was a precursor to the more relaxed and laddish style that Jamie Oliver approached telly cooking with when The Naked Chef started up on BBC, but that feels like an altogether unnecessary insult. I mean, the food here is already gruesome enough. There are somewhat endearing qualities to the show, as there often is to a lot of things from the 90s that were shown in the dead of night and were clearly made with a budget of 50 pence and a used condom. It's crap, but in such a way that's intensely nostalgic, because you don't get stuff like this on television anymore. Hell, even cooking videos on YouTube have largely progressed far beyond the level of this production, and you won't find them making things like mustard rabbit and corn flaky bakey either. Well, most of them anyway. It's probably not of interest to anyone beyond the freaky sorts like me who have a perverse interest in old and unremembered British television, but then it's not like the programme ever had any aspirations of being mainstream. It does manage to capture something that a lot of shows strived for, certainly those aimed at young people back in the day, and a lot of shows didn't manage to get. Sincerity. It actually does feel sincere, like a proper product that was made by students and for students. Something that's very relatable to them. It's just that, you know, you probably wouldn't want to go around Les for dinner anytime soon. Well, so much for Get Stuffed and hey, so much for this video. If you liked it then, hey, please do like it, please hit that subscribe button and all that good stuff and who knows, maybe I'll be back with some more weird British television from the vaults late nights or otherwise. Anyway, yeah, that's uh, about it. See ya. Roll of credits. And don't forget, you know, get stuffed. Get stuffed. Oh, God. Oh, dear, I'm going to have nightmares about that rabbit for weeks. Also, if you really like my stuff and want to support the channel, you could have a look at my Patreon. I'd specifically like to thank these awesome people. Alexa Jones-Gonzalez, Andrew Dalton, Arcade LY Webmaster, Brian Henniger, D. Xalior Rimon Suter, Dagorath Dungeon Keeper, Danny Wolfers, David Matuszek, David Rose, Dinty76538, Douglas Miller, Dustin Cooper, Gary Samaden, Glunfeth, Jay is Manchild, James Brown, Jace Alexander, Jeff Ladd, Johnny, Kid Cassette, Lucas Kaligowski, Mike Clayton Travis, Martin Pataki, Nate Milbank, Peter Bushstar Bushnell, Pote Margell, Renbimon, Robert De Felice, Rod B, Rusty Kelly, Sam Stoddart, Seth A. Robinson, Simon Gulliver, Stuart Christopher Brownlee, Tamas, Tariq Amir, Tom K. Yucca Operator, and to all the rest of the awesome community, thank you so much, and goodbye.